Hello friends, I'm Abby and today I'm going to be filming a long overdue book haul. So I have not done a book haul on my channel since February and in February that was kind of wrapping up some of my Christmas gifts that were given to me. So I've accumulated over 50 books in the last six months. So it's about time I share them with you because if I wait any longer to film this video, it will be hours long. Needless to say, I will not be giving you super in-depth discussions or a synopsis on these books. I'll give you like a brief one sentence type thing, but I have read and talked about most of these books on my channel already. So I'm not gonna give you like a deep overview. My goal this year with buying books is to only buy books that I have already read and loved. So most of these books I've already read and really, really enjoyed. So I'm just gonna kind of show you what I bought and give you a brief synopsis. These are also in no particular order. I just kind of pulled them based on the months I got them in. I could put them in an order, but I'm not going to. So we're just gonna start with Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and then I listened to this book on audiobook. And I will say, audiobook for this is the best way to read this book. It is the best audiobook I've ever read. But this book was on sale. I think it was only $8. Yeah, it was $8 at my local used bookstore. So I picked it up because it brings me joy to see it on my shelves. And I really loved it. I gave the audiobook four stars. So I didn't mind having it on my shelf and it was on sale. Next up, I've already talked about the first book in the series, Desperate Measures by Katie Robert. But I also bought and read and really enjoyed Learn My Lesson by Katie Robert. And so this is a erotica romance series that is all about Disney characters who are ending up with the villains. So it's part of a Wicked Villain series. It's modern day. It is not magical. But the first book is Jafar and Jasmine. And then the second book is a polyamorous relationship between Hades, Hercules, and Meg. So it's very interesting. It takes place in this kind of underground club. And it's called The Underworld. Hades runs it. And so both of these books were very interesting very smutty and had a lot more plot and storyline than I expected and I can't wait to pick up the rest of the series but for the time being I've only read and really enjoyed these two. Next I got How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House by Sherry Jones. This book is all about Lala and she lives on the beach with her husband, but there are a lot of very traumatic things happening in her life. The relationship is not great and the story really follows Lala in the past as well as Lala's grandmother and it follows her in the present and there's kind of a murder mystery going on. It reads somewhat like a family drama and somewhat like a thriller. It's fairly short, very hurtful. It is not a happy book, but I highly recommend this. And also the cover is absolutely stunning. One of my favorite covers of the year. I don't know if you can see, but there's kind of like a red splatter on it. It definitely has like the the thrillery, drama dark vibes but also has the bright island colors so so great i really truly enjoyed this book the next book i bought it's a very controversial choice for liking but i really liked if i disappear by eliza jane brazier and lots of people i would say most people who i've seen read this this year have really been disappointed but I really enjoyed it. This book is all about a true crime podcast host who goes missing and this girl who is obsessed with the podcast tries to go and find her. And it was just really interesting to me. And I loved the setting. I loved the atmosphere. I read it in like two days. And the ending did kind of make me wish there was more explanation for what happens. It's kind of an ambiguous ending, but... I really enjoyed it, plus this cover, again, is one of my favorite covers of the year. So I really just felt like I had to buy it, and I'm happy that I did. Next, I bought a duology that I had completed earlier this year, I think, or maybe the end of last year, I don't remember, but it is the Wrath and the du Dawn duology. So we have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier, and then the sequel to the duology, which is The Rose and the Dagger, and this is a 1,000 Nights retelling so it focuses on Sherazad and Khalid and Khalid is this king who is known as the 
wife killer or something like that and he basically marries women and then kills them the next day that's what he's known for and Sherazad's best friend was given to him to be a wife and murdered and she decides she is going to go infiltrate she's going to become a wife and she's going to kill him first and it is kind of a romance a forbidden romance a enemies to lovers romance and it was just a fantastic duology it had some of my favorite elements of a fantasy duology that I truly truly love the romance was key in this and that is what made me love it so much so I bought these editions from the UK I believe they are from hotter books Yes, so these are the Hotter Books editions. They're just my favorite covers that I found. I deliberated on which ones to buy, and I decided to get these. So I got these from Book Depository, and I really enjoy them. They're my favorite covers, and the way that the colors go with each other in the sequel, so you have, like, the red petals and the blue, and then you have, like, the red face and the blue background. Love it. Next, I bought Namesake by Adrienne Young, which is is the sequel to Fable, and this is the final book in the duology. I have read it. It was good. Not my favorite duology ever, but these covers are everything, and I already owned the first book, and the covers, when you put them together, create one whole face, and so I just kind of felt like I needed to complete the look on my shelves with this book, but it's not my favorite fantasy duology pretty good. I actually really enjoyed it. It's kind of, again, one that's very back and forth on booktube, but it's all about a girl named Fable whose father leaves her on an island, and she has to kind of find her way to her father in order to prove herself, and she boards the ship and joins this crew and spends her time getting back to her father, and then this kind of picks up right where the first book left off. I also bought The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This is my favorite Grady Hendrix novel so far. It features a book club full of Southern women. They all read true crime. And there is a man who moves into the town and tries to join their book club, but they start to think that something is maybe not right with this man. And this book has some terrifying imagery and scenes that were just really, really awful to read about. Very gory, but honestly, so memorable. And it has a wonderful social aspect as well. So kind of a discussion on feminism and on race in this society. So absolutely loved it. I also bought Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams, and I got this also at a used bookstore. So I bought it before reading it. I don't, I took the sticker off but I believe it was only like seven dollars and I read it and loved it so this book is all about Queenie who is kind of the typical poster child for millennial ennui she doesn't know what she wants to do she doesn't really have an idea for what to do with her life she has kind of made a mess of everything going on in her life and doesn't know how to get herself out of it it has beautiful mental health representation and therapy representation. It has a great discussion on like social and political issues in society today. And I just loved Queenie as a character. So I highly recommend this one as well. And this orange cover with the gold shimmery name. I loved it. Next, I picked up Their Eyes Were Watching God, and this is the 75th anniversary edition by Zora Neale Hurston. I've never read this. It is a classic, and I really don't know anything about about it and I really don't think I'm going to figure out a whole lot about it but I it's a classic and I I want to read it at some point the real reason I bought this is that it is annotated so I don't know if you can see um the previous person who had it annotated in it and they wrote notes in the margins and it's just the notes were really funny I'm gonna get to this at some point and I can't wait my book of the month choice for that month was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And this one was, again, okay, but maybe my absolute favorite cover of 2021. Look at this cover. Just look at it. The gold and the color combinations, the pinks and the blues and the greens and the yellows and the purples. It's everything. It's everything. The book didn't necessarily live up to my expectations, but that's okay because the cover did. The cover did that. But this book is all about an apothecary woman in the 1800s maybe? Oh, I don't remember. 
But she basically is making poisons to kill men who have wronged women. And it's more, it's advertised as a fantasy, but it's definitely just historical fiction that switches back and forth between historical fiction and a modern day viewpoint of this woman who rediscovers the apothecary shop. So it was good. Didn't live up to my expectations, but that cover surely did. Thank you. And the next book is a romance that was gifted to me, and I don't think I ever hauled it, but it is Much Ado About You by Samantha Young. My friend Mackenzie gave this to me to celebrate National School Counselor Week. And this book is all about this woman, Evangeline Evie, and she is fired from her job and really just doesn't really know what to do next with her life. She moves to this like quaint English village and starts running this bookshop there and really just has this like romantic vacation. She doesn't plan to stay forever. She's just kind of like trying to get away and clear her head. And it turns into this beautiful, slow, cottage core like small town love story and I actually really enjoyed it I really enjoyed it and I'm very thankful that I have it on my shelf because not only did I really enjoy it but I think that the cover is super cute next I have a few books that I bought for the Asian readathon that happened a couple months ago and the first one was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang absolutely loved this Michael and Stella are my absolute OTP. Love them so much. Stella in this book is someone who has autism spectrum disorder. So she's on the spectrum and she is learning how to have a romantic relationship. So she hires Michael, who is an escort, to teach her all about romance. Their relationship is everything. This book is everything. If you like steam, like I mean steam, in your romance novels, this is it. The next book that I absolutely loved from the Asian Readathon was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. And this is a young adult fantasy book that is all about Lei. And Lei is part of the paper cast, which are essentially completely human people in this world. And then there are the steel casts, which are kind of half human, half demon. And they present as an people with animal features. And then there are the moon casts, which are full demons. And this is all about Lei, and she is taken in as a consort to the king who takes in paper girls that are young girls and he basically sleeps with them for a year and then they're part of the society in the kingdom and they serve him for the rest of their lives and Lei does not want anything to do with this. She, her mother was kidnapped by this kingdom and she really is just there to find out stuff about her mom and maybe like try to infiltrate the the system and she just is so fierce and I love her and she ends up falling in love with another paper girl so it is a cute sabbat romance with so much angst and tension this book is the start of a series but I read it as a fantasy standalone because it functions that way it can definitely as long as you ignore the epilogue you can read it as a standalone. I might continue this series at some point, but I just loved the way this ended, and I've heard the second book isn't as good. So, I don't know. I don't know if I'll continue. I guess I'll let you know someday. And then the last book that I bought for the Asian Readathon was Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. Loved this. Five-star book for me. It's a t collection of four stories in this coffee shop where you can travel back in time in the coffee shop, but you have to be back before your coffee gets cold. And so this covers four different people who come into the coffee shop and their story as they are traveling back in time, what they're traveling back in time for, what they're learning. Just a really wholesome story. Very odd cover. Some people, I didn't realize it had this blue foil in it, this is one of those books that is like, some people are obsessed with the cover. I'm not necessarily obsessed, but it's definitely different from every other book I own. Next, A Phoenix First Must Burn by, edited by Patrice Codwell. And this is 16 Stories of Black Girl Magic, Resistance, and Hope. It's a collection of 16 short stories all about black girls, and they are sci-fi fantasy stories. I wasn't a big short story person. I saw this recommended by Books and Lala, so I picked it up, and I absolutely loved it, so I decided to buy it. Plus, this cover is absolutely stunning. All 16 stories I thought were very moving, very impactful, and memorable. So for a short story, I think that that is kind of a big deal. So loved this, had to buy it. 
Next, I bought The Troop by Nick Cutter. And this is my favorite horror novel, I think, as of right now. The one that I think is the scariest horror novel. And this is all about Boy Scouts in Canada who go camping on this island. And there's a man who shows up on their camping trip and... They're like very isolated on this island and this man is very emaciated but can't stop eating and they discover that it might be more contagious than they think. This was very scary to me and I listened to it on audiobook so I wanted to buy it and have it physically because I think reading it again physically will be a completely different experience. Although I do recommend the audiobook for this. It was great. Next is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. I bought this not having read it because I knew that I would prioritize it more if it was on my physical TBR and it's working because I'm currently reading this. I don't know if you can see, but I'm like 50 pages in. This book is all about Scarlett, who is a professor. She's an English professor at this college and she is a serial killer. She kills men who have wronged women and she doesn't really feel any remorse about that. And I think this story is about her teaming up with a student. I'm really into it so far. The writing's great. This is so highly recommended by people on booktube and I haven't read a thriller that like really gripped me recently so I'm hoping this is the one. Next is another one that I haven't read yet and that is The Scent Keeper by Erica Bauermeister. I bought this because of the cover and because the reviews that I've heard have been wonderful but this is all about Emmeline and she lives on a remote island with her father and they have the power of scent like smells are very important to them and impactful for some reason I don't really understand why but this is kind of a literary fiction novel about Emmeline and her life on this island and kind of finding home and what home means but it also has this little like magical realism element so I'm very excited to read it it is absolutely stunning the cover is absolutely stunning and I really just I saw this cover online and I wanted to buy it to make sure I got it because it's out in paperback so I wanted to make sure that I owned this copy because this is way more beautiful than the paper pack no shame to the paperback but like this is prime Next, I got a couple books from the book fair this year that I got for my classroom. So I have Ways to Make Sunshine by Renee Watson. This is a book all about Ryan, whose name means king. And Ryan is learning about how to love herself and how to bring sunshine into the world when things are kind of dark and gloomy. It's very short. It is a kid's chapter book. I ended up giving this three stars. It is... Pretty good. I don't know that I can use it to like teach a whole lot to kids, but I think I'm going to keep it as a resource for kids who are looking for something kind of fun to read. It's just a really interesting story about finding your way through challenges. So I enjoyed it. Then we had Stargazing by Jen Wong, and this is a pr pretty famous graphic novel. It is all about Moon and Christine. So it's kind of a autobiographical graphic novel because I believe the author Jen represents Moon because although it's a fictional story Jen went through something similar to what Moon goes through and I'm not going to spoil it because it is pretty much the entire plot of a story but Christine and Moon are kind of discovering their friendship and when Moon starts to share that they see um, creatures and like mermaids in the sky Christine and Moon kind of explore what that means and they're exploring their friendship in middle school or in elementary school I think they're fourth grade just kind of cute story about friendship again not super memorable but it was cute and then my favorite book that I bought from the book fair was Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga and this is about Yuda and Yuda is immigrating from Bangladesh to the United States with her mother but they're leaving her father and her brother behind and she is kind of coping with being in a new country and what it's like to kind of not be in your home country any longer not speak fluently in the language of the country you're in and it really just follows her as she's adapting to being in a new country. She is a fantastic character. I loved her story and this book is written in verse so it definitely was quick to get through and something that was interesting personally to me is that she comes to Cincinnati so I got to see kind of how the Midwest specifically and the places that 
are around where I live treat people like Yuda who are coming in and not being fluent in English, not being American citizens right away. And I definitely see that in my daily life. So this was so impactful for me. This also features theater as kind of a plot point and Yuda exploring being in this country through theater. I, I really enjoyed that. My book of the month choices for this month that I'm talking about now were Ariadne, which is by Jennifer Saint. It was her debut novel. I read it. I gave it four stars. I actually really, really enjoyed it. It is not my favorite Greek mythology story. I thought it dragged in some places, but it is very memorable. And I actually learned quite a lot from the book, but I really, really enjoyed it. It had some of my favorite Greek mythology elements. It was a pretty classic like Greek story retelling. And I'm looking forward to Jennifer Saint's next book coming out, which is Electra. And then I added on Final Girls by Riley Sager because I listened to this on audiobook, really, really enjoyed it. I'm surprised because most people say I that if you start with his more recent novels and listen to the backlist that you don't enjoy them as much. And I definitely experienced that with The Last Time I Lied. I did not enjoy it. But this really shocked me. So I decided I wanted to own it and I added it on to my book of the month order. I also got the Owl Crate edition of The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna because I loved the story. I gave it four and a half stars. And the Owl Crate edition has this beautiful mandala drawing in the backgrounds or design I guess it's not a drawing in the background of it and I loved it I thought it was stunning and I kind of wanted that special edition it also has this beautiful design on the inside this book is all about Deka and Deka lives in a society where they bleed women when they turn 16 and if you bleed red, you are considered pure. And if you bleed gold, it means that you have demon blood and are considered impure and they kill you. So Deka is very nervous. And of course, at her bleeding, she bleeds gold, even though she has no reason to think that she has demon blood. It causes kind of this uproar and she's given away. She's taken to this army where they are building an army to fight these kind of creatures that are challenging the kingdom, the town, the world, I don't know. But she's kind of given to this army and she's training to fight these things and is kind of creating this band of sisters because they're all women in this little group. Just very interesting, really loved it. A fantastic start to a young adult fantasy story. I also picked up the graphic novel, The Tea Dragon Society, one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. And this is all about tea dragons. It has absolutely stunning artwork. This is what I call light fantasy, cozy fantasy. It's a graphic novel all about tea dragons and it is very inclusive. This story, I believe, um, includes members of the LGBTQIA plus community. And ultimately, it's just a short and sweet and beautiful novel that's very cozy, goes through a year in the society where they're learning about tea dragons. I also picked up The One by John Mars. I read this last summer. It's one of my favorite thrillers of all time and I didn't own it. It only comes in this like weird compact format, but I'm not mad about it. I mean, it's a little weird that it doesn't come in any other like traditional format. But whatever, it's cute, it's little. I could stick it in a handbag. And this one is all about um, this society where there's now a DNA test that shows you who your one true love is, who the one is for you. And it kind of tears apart relationships, it creates chaos, but also helps people find their one true love. And this story follows a group of people all who are finding their one true love and all of them have a secret, every single person has a secret in this, and it gets crazy. I will tell you, not a spoiler, one of the characters is a serial killer. There you go. I also picked up the first two books in the Wayfarers series, because these are the two that I have read. We have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and A Close and Common Orbit, both by Becky Chambers. And this series is kind of a collection of standalones that all go together about this crew and this world of space travel so it's set in this world where there are lots of different alien species all kind of getting along together and they're all living in space together there's all these different like places where people go and the first book 
focuses on a crew on the ship who are getting to know each other. It's very cozy, light sci-fi, although it has all of the space elements you could be looking for. And then the second one is about AI and human life, motherhood. This one's like more of a found family. They're very cozy sci-fi, very much about gender and found family and love. I highly recommend this series. Of course, I've only read the first two books, but I'm sure the rest will be great. Then I picked up Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas, another one of my absolute favorite covers of the year. Stunning. And this book is a Peter Pan retelling that takes place with this girl named Wendy who her brothers have been missing and she went missing with them, but then she came back. Her brothers did not. And she remembers this boy named Peter, but she thinks that it's a story from her childhood and it turns out that it's not and Peter's real. And they kind of team up to try to find her brothers. Just take a second and look at the cover though. Just take a second. Yeah, it's good. It's a good one. Now, the winner for what might possibly be my absolute favorite cover of the year is The Light Through the Leaves by Glendy Vanderoff. And I got this for free from Amazon First Reads. And I'm obsessed with this book. It's definitely very Where the Crawdads Sing vibes. So if you liked that book, I recommend you pick this up. It's big but it's worth it. And this book is all about this woman whose daughter is stolen from her as a baby and she blames herself. She, the, the mother like goes off on this like journey through the woods to kind of find herself again and learn how to live with this grief of losing her child. And then it also focuses on the perspective of this girl named Raven who's grown up in the woods her entire life with her mom who keeps her kind of trapped in this house and it definitely has a very strange vibe to it. But this cover though, this cover, and this isn't even the end. Let's open it up. Ah, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. This is definitely one that is like front facing on my shelves. And then I got two books from Book of the Month that month and I have read both of them. The first one is People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I absolutely love this. I gave it four and a half stars. It is a friends to, not friends, back to friends to lovers kind of story. So this is all about two people who were best friends. They went on a summer vacation together every year and then something happened two years ago that blew their friendship up, they haven't spoken in two years, and the main character Poppy reaches out to Alex and says, hey, I really want to go on another vacation with you, what do you think? And he agrees to it, and they try to fix their friendship. And along the way, you find out what happened in the past summers, as well as what's going on in their current time together. It's perfect for a summer read. I really, really enjoyed it. This is my first Emily Henry book. So I haven't read Beach Read, but I'm eager to pick it up now because I liked this one so much. And look at that spine with the palm trees. Okay, stunning, we love. I also picked up another stunning cover. That's the theme of this haul, apparently. And it's Love and Color by Bolu Babalola, Mythical Tales from Around the World Retold. I've talked about this one a couple times, but it is another collection of short stories that have absolutely stolen my heart. They are all retellings of mythical love stories, and it includes things like Nefertiti, Thisbe, Psyche, as well as four brand new stories that Bolu Babalola wrote in the back. And I absolutely loved this. It was full of the best parts of romance, in my opinion. And I loved what Bolu Babalula was able to do in such a short time with all these characters. All right, then we have the first two books written by Alexandria Bella Flor, her two books that are out. I read Written in the Stars around Christmas time, I think the end of the year. And this is a Pride and Prejudice retelling. This is about Darcy and Elle who have a horrible first date, but in order to get Darcy's brother off her back, Darcy says the date went well and that they're dating. And so they have to fake date. It turns into real dating and it turns into love. Absolutely loved it. One of my favorite sapphic romances that I've ever read. And then Hang the Moon is the second book. It just came out this summer. It's set in the summer, so I read it at the perfect time. And this is all about Brendan and Annie. Annie is Darcy's best friend and Brendan is Darcy's brother and they had a crush on each other when they were younger 
And then now that they haven't seen each other in eight years, they reconnect, have instant attraction. But Annie is only visiting because she travels for her job and she just accepted a new job in London and she leaves in two weeks. So they kind of spend this book figuring out what they're going to do, whether their romance is worth sticking around for. It's sweet and both of these are very funny, very angsty, and very traditional rom-com in my opinion. But they have great representation. Annie's bisexual. Wonderful. And then we have Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. I read this last year. Really loved it. Didn't own it, so I decided to buy it because it I loved it and I definitely want to reread it at some point soon. And this is a historical romance all about Annabelle who joins the suffragette movement to try to get women land rights, I believe. And they all are given this task to kind of go to a man in society and convince them to join their cause. And she is given the Duke Montgomery, who is the Duke and is very crabby. And they seem to have some kind of connection. So they give her this Duke to try to convince. And it turns into this beautiful romance. Loved it. Next, I got Never Look Back by Lillian Rivera. This is an Orpheus and Eurydice Greek myth retelling, but it takes place in modern day New York and it focuses on Yuri and Phoebus. Yuri has some traumatic things going on in her past, such as living through a hurricane and there is what feels like a constant like negative presence around her. And Phoebus has the power of music and this has a little bit of a fantasy element. You'd get to see this kind of Greek myth retelling world. I absolutely loved it. I loved these characters. And I also think this one is a perfect summer read if you're going to pick up a young adult contemporary with a hint of fantasy. Felix Ever After. I read this last summer. I didn't own it, but I really wanted to. And it just came out in paperback. So I picked up the paperback version. Absolutely loved this. This is all about Felix, who is a trans man and he's never been in love, even though his last name's Love. It's very ironic. And all he wants is to fall in love. Then at school, at this art school that he's going to over the summer, someone dead names him and puts up old pictures of him before he transitioned and make it really uncomfortable and basically target him. And he makes it his mission to get revenge on them, to find out who's doing it, and along the way, maybe find some love. Absolutely stunning. One of my favorite books of last year, so I wanted to own it. Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Ayamidi. Ayamide? Ace of Spades. I really enjoyed this. This is Get Out meets Gossip Girl is how it's advertised. I think it holds true to that idea. It is definitely Get Out and Gossip Girl as well as I believe like a Pretty Little Liars vibe if you prefer that comparison. But it's this rich boarding school where these kids are basically getting targeted the two main characters, Devon and Chiamaka, are both being targeted and they don't know why and they are basically getting all of their secrets told in anonymous texts throughout the school. So it was very dramatic. It went super quickly. I read this like 450 page book in a couple days. That's only 400 pages, but I read it in a couple days and I really loved it. These ones I'm not going to talk about because I did just talk about in my recent reads and I have a whole vlog about them, but I'm going to show them to you. King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. Look at this beautiful cover. So stunning. And then this hardcover has like a dragonfly on it. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a very cute middle grade, and I loved the cover. Amari and the Night Brothers, another fantastic cover. And again, a middle grade fantasy novel, but I really wanted to own this. The hardcover for this is also stunning. Yes, I know. It's amazing. We love it. Then I picked up When Life Gives You Mangoes by Corrine Getton. This is, again, the most summery covers I'm obsessed and then nevermore I picked up the first book in paperback because that's what it's available to me and this is the first book in the nevermore series the trials of Morgan Crow I also picked up the first or the last two books in the Brown Sister trilogy so I got take a hint Danny Brown I read this I really enjoyed this I gave it four stars this made me laugh out loud and then I got actor age Eve Brown which I gave four and a half stars it has one of my favorite characters ever, Jacob in it. Chloe Brown is still my top, but this whole series is fantastic. If you're looking for an adult romance, contemporary, inclusive, steamy, smutty series, this is it. This is the one. They're so funny. They're so funny. 
I also picked up the ones we're meant to find by Joan He. I really enjoyed this book. I still don't know that I understand everything about it. I think this might be a special edition of the book though because it has this very shimmery cover that I love the texture of. It's very hard to show on camera, but it's very shimmery. It has these gorgeous end papers. Absolutely gorgeous. It gives me very Steven Universe vibes. Absolutely gorgeous. And this side shows one depiction one of the sisters in the story is stuck on a desert island and so this is this side and then one of the sisters is in this floating eco city that's this side but then this book also has a stunning hardcover where it has this kind of cream with rose gold waves stunning absolutely one of my favorite covers of the year and the book itself was great it is kind of a sci-fi dystopian world that focuses on the ecosystem and climate change. It's definitely a cli-fi story. I thought that the sisterhood element and the romance in this was great as well. So I truly enjoyed that. I bought Every Hearted Doorway by Sean McGuire. I have not read this yet, but it's short and I'm hoping to get to it very soon. And this is the beginning of this series where all of these kids, it focuses on these kids who go through magical doorways, basically like kids from stories we know, like Alice in Wonderland, and what happens to them when they return back to the real world, a little bit older, and having spent so much time in this fantasy world, how do they cope with being in the real world? So I'm so excited to get to that. I also picked up A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This is actually a funny story, so I'm going to tell it. I bought this book because my friend was having a really tough time and she really wanted to buy this book and it wasn't in stock in any bookstores and so I placed an order for it. I was going to surprise her with it and the next day she went to a bookstore and placed an order herself. So rather than cancel the order, because this is a book that I think I'm going to really enjoy, I just stuck with the order and was like, ah, well, I'll keep the book myself instead of giving it to her as a present. But this is a Persephone and Hades retelling that takes place in this like fantasy world. It is a fantasy romance, but I believe it's kind of more modern day than like a traditional old school Hades and Persephone retelling. I'm very excited. I've heard it's steamy. I've heard it's wonderful. And this is the start of a series. So I'm excited to pick it up even though it wasn't originally intended for me. Then I got One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This is the author who wrote Red, White, and Royal Blue. I have finished this book, and I gave it four and a half stars. Jane and August are everything. But also, look at this cover. Pinks and purples and blues this year are just going off, and I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Oh, I also got, before I forget, an ebook that I got from Amazon First Reads that I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite cover designers, um, Michaela Alcano. So I'm going to pop it up here. It's called The Puma Years. I loved this book, so I want to shout it out because I haven't talked about it anywhere. And I didn't buy it physically because I have the ebook, but it was great. And the cover is stunning. And on the actual book, if you want to buy it, it has like a hardcover design on it where it has like the puma and I think the back has maybe like a toucan or something, but it's stunning. Then my final three books are book of the month choices that I got last month. The first one I've already read and that is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. And I gave this four stars. It was a fun ride and look at this cover. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, this cover is absolutely stunning. Like the blood on the bust, the gold shimmery like foil. It's more like a rose gold of his name. The mountains in the background. This book has Greek mythology and obsession and murder and craziness. So good, so good. Then I got Malibu Rising, another Taylor Jenkins read for this haul. Everyone's talked about this book, but this is... TJR's newest book and it is all about the Riva family in Malibu. They're having a house party and it goes through these four siblings lives throughout that 24 hours where everything changes. And the last book for this haul, Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. And this is an Arthurian legend retelling 
all about the Lady of Shallot. But it says, everyone knows the legend of Arthur destined to be a king, of the beautiful Guinevere who will betray him with his most loyal knight Lancelot, of the bitter sorceress Morgana who will turn against them all. But Elaine alone carries the burden of knowing what is to come, for Elaine of Shallot is cursed to see the future. And so this talks about Elaine, who is stuck in this tower in the story of Camelot and this world of Arthurian legend and this focuses on her story and so we love a female retelling or a retelling of a story we already know but told from a female perspective we love it Whew, that is going to be all for me today friends thank you so much for watching this giant book haul please like comment subscribe share this video with anyone you think would enjoy it and I'll see you next time bye friends